So here I am thinking I was done with the Dave Chappelle saga, considering we rounded off with 10 parts. But some of y'all in the comment section of the last one that I did, which was part 10, said, I don't know, Torian. Something just recently happened. You might need to keep this series going. And so I decided to do a little bit of research and I came across this incident. And I, well, I don't even want to call it an incident. The situation that happened when Dave Chappelle went back to his old school, which was the Duke Ellington School of the Arts. Um, which a lot of people have gone to that school and uh, to hone their craft. It's an art school and it is a very famous one and it is located in D.C., which we all know Dave Chappelle is from. But he went there to his school and apparently some of the students there who are probably experiencing some severe fake outrage decided that they were going to come at Dave Chappelle because of the comments that he or the stuff that he said in his the closer Netflix special. And let me just tell you, this is kind of the reason why I didn't want to talk about it, because it was like, in my opinion, he got the big fish, which was the situation over at Netflix. And this right here is small fish. But since people said, I think you should talk about it. Here we are. So I think I already have in my mind what I'm going to title this, and I think this will be very appropriate. But I'm going to go ahead and read this article that's coming from Yahoo News via Insider. And it says, Dave Chappelle's surprise appearance at his former high school was the most narcissistic display I've seen. And somehow I doubt that this is an art school and it's some of the most bourgeoisie, uh, uppity, sticking their nose up at people type of people go there, might I add. Thank God. It seems to me that Dave Chappelle is not one of those people. And this is what a student said, but I'm going to go ahead and get into it. A student who attended Dave Chappelle's recent appearance at a comedian's former high school said it was, quote unquote, grotesque display of, quote, ego and narcissism, end quote. Multiple media outlets reported that Chappelle made a surprise visit to his alma mater, the Duke Ellington School of the Arts in Washington, D.C., on Tuesday to speak with students before Thanksgiving. The school had initially postponed plans for the comedian to appear at a school fundraiser after students threatened to organize a walkout over comments Chappelle made about trans people in his recent Netflix comedy special, The Closer. So they basically tried to do the same thing that the people over at Netflix did. How original, and I say that with the most sarcasm as I possibly can. But Allison Finch Wilson, whose 16 year old son, Andrew Wilson, attends Duke Ellington, said the parents of the student parents of students at the school received an email Tuesday afternoon informing them that there would be a special assembly. So kids would get let out 30 minutes later than normal. And I'm going to read what um one of the, the tweet for it went on to say it says further regarding Dave Chappelle at at Duke Ellington, D.C., because this is coming from Twitter. On Tuesday, the below screenshot is all parents knew in advance. When my child called at the conclusion of that train wreck of an assembly, he was blown, shaken, shocked, and appalled by what they all experienced. And this Allison Finch Wilson looks like a uh, a black woman. Andrew told Insider that students were instructed to place their cell phones in pouches as they approached the assembly hall. Now, before I go any further... I know what they were doing. Um, at my place of employment, Dave Chappelle did a special on Tuesday, November 23rd. I did not work the event, um, but I know some of my coworkers that did. When they mentioned that part about the putting the pouches, the phones in pouches, that part didn't catch me by surprise when I read it because that's the same thing they had to do for the guests who went to this particular event they even said that they had someone walking around the building in and outside of the zones with this kind of motion detector that detects cell phones and if it detected a cell phone whether you were using it or not then you would get kicked out of the venue and some of my co-workers were telling me uh, like dozens of people got kicked out Someone even saw someone actually get kicked out because they had their cell phone. They were not playing. And I think it's because they were doing a screening 
of his documentary and they didn't want people to record anything for copyright purposes. And I'm like, look, I'll put my phone in the pouch because I'd rather have my phone in that pouch and be able to watch this screening than to have my phone on me and one, get kicked out two get caught with it. And three, slip up, record something, put it on the Internet. And then I get Dave Chappelle's people calling me saying, sir, we are about to serve you. Or they may not call me. They'll just say, hey, we're serving you. I wouldn't want to deal with that. So like this person said, they were warned in advance. It's not like it was just the, oh, my God, type of thing. But, of course, they're going to overblow this and they're going to blow it out of um, out of proportion. So when I read that thing about the cell phones being in pouches, I knew exactly where that was coming from. Uh, so shortly after Chappelle came out on stage and asked any students who were offended by him to raise their hands and approach the stage to voice their grievances. Two transgender people were in line and one transgender person was trying to explain. And Dave Chappelle kept talking over him and blatantly disrespecting the fact that he was talking and trying to make a joke out of the situation. Andrew told Insider. <clears throat> And then the second transgender person tried to explain to Dave Chappelle what misgendering was. And Dave Chappelle interrupted her and completely ignored that, he added. And then moved on to the next person. So now they're really trying to do their best to discredit this whole um, this whole situation, which I'm almost certain they probably blew that out of proportion. But what do I know? I wasn't there. So what do I know? Misgendering is the act of referring to a person with a gender that does not match their gender identity. So basically, if I wanted to walk around here and call myself a woman and someone called me a man, then I would have the right to say they misgendered me. And if I scream loud enough, I might actually get a hate crime thrown onto them. See how silly that sounds? Let me continue. Andrew added that at the end of the evening, Chappelle proceeded to tell the students, I am better at what I do than all of you in this room. Mind you, these are all words from the students. So we got to take this with just the smallest grain of salt. Meaning we can't believe everything that they're saying. Remember, Dave Chappelle is public enemy number one for the last couple of months and ongoing. He added it was just a grotesque display of ego and narcissism. Andrew later said that throughout the event, Chappelle, who appeared on stage with film cameras for a documentary, was reluctant to engage with the concerns of the students, but continually told the audience that they can't silence him. He kept on saying, you can't silence me. How dare you try to silence me? Not one person in that room was trying to silence him at all. Andrew said again, grain of salt. One girl raised her hand and said, I understand what you're saying and I respect your art, but you don't understand how many transgender people die every day, he said. Andrew added that Chappelle then interrupted the girl and said, people die every day using the N-word instead of people. Uh, representatives for Chappelle did not immediately respond to Insider's request for comment, but Carla Sims, a spokesperson for Chappelle, provided a statement to the news site Politico, which initially reported that Chappelle had visited the school. He said these kids deserve an F for forgiveness. Sims said of Chappelle's response to the evening, give them some space to grow. They are going to say things that are immature. So it's almost like, see, they came in with the preparedness of wanting to go at him based on everything that's been going on with Netflix. And again, these are teenage kids coming at him like they're grown adults. I'm like, understand at the end of the day, this is a man that's old enough to be your father. And some of y'all are being very, very disrespectful. But then again, we live in a generation where there are kids raising kids and the kids raising the kids would rather be their kids' friends than their kids' parents. Andrew, who identifies as gay, said Chappelle's appearance was the most narcissistic, narcissistic display I have ever seen in my entire life because of the comedian's attitude and ego. Have y'all noticed that the only comments that they're taking are people who identify as gay and trans? They did not get anybody else's take on there because I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that most I'm, I'm assuming that most of the people that go to that school are not in the academy. Granted, there are some. But not all. But they're only taking the statements of those who are in. That's why I said you got to take this with the tiniest grain of salt with what they're saying. You could just tell that he didn't take that situation seriously and how he didn't want to be there. This was definitely very clear in his action throughout the entire night, Andrew said. The event ended, he said, with the school's principal coming out on stage with Chappelle and they hugged and laughed. He added and then he brought Erica Badu out. 
Andrew's mother, who was a Duke Ellington alumnus, added that the goal had never been to cancel Culture Chappelle, lies, whom she said had been a tremendous benefactor to the school. They had to throw in the part that he donates. Let's see. I'm going to be honest. After the way they treated me, if I was Dave Chappelle, they wouldn't get another dime from me. And if they do, it will be a very small one. So minuscule that you have to use a microscope to see it. But to facilitate an environment where the students can engage with Chappelle without such a wild power dynamic. But here's the thing. Was Dave Chappelle supposed to just let them come up there and say anything they wanted to say without him having a rebuttal? It doesn't matter that these are teenagers. These teenagers came up and approached this guy like they were grown. Like they were talking to a grown man like they were a grown person themselves. None of these kids that are there are eight, eight, uh, 18. And if they are 18, they probably just turned 18. You're talking to a guy who has gone through life experiences, who has seen more than they have in their entire lifetime. And then some. Like he says, they have not grown yet. They don't know what the real world is like. They're only basing it off of what they see on social media and what they hear from whatever. This guy's actually lived it. He has lived in life experiences that they have not experienced and probably won't because many of them are in their bubble. This guy has been in various different spaces while different various people all walks of life. But the thing is, they're trying to make it seem like Dave Chappelle should just let them come up there and make these comments and he should not have a rebuttal or say anything back in response. He's supposed to just take it on the chin. It's like, OK, I see how you feel. No, that would be him kowtowing to whatever they say. And Dave Chappelle, if he's not going to kowtow to grown people, what makes you think he's going to do it to little kids? Yes, I call them little kids because by law, if they're under the age of 18, they are a child. They just have the title of teen next to their name. So I see where Dave Chappelle was coming from. But you have the little kids, meaning the ones under the age of 18, and the big kids, meaning their parents, getting so upset about it. And for what? For absolutely nothing. And it's fake outrage because they want to piggyback off of what was going on over at Netflix. And they're trying to keep this thing going. And they still cannot cancel this man for nothing. Now that I'm re reading off all of this, I'm glad I'm I'm kind of bringing life back into this saga to the point where I don't think this thing might never end. I thought it was over. And here we are. <sighs> Let's see. Chappelle has been a prominent supporter of Duke Ellington School of the Arts over the years, donating a total of one hundred thousand dollars and giving the school one of his Emmy Awards. According to Deadline, Chappelle also held a master class for students in 2017 that featured fellow Bradley Cooper and Chris Tucker. The outcry over the closer, the sixth stand-up special Chappelle had on his net had has had on Netflix has been widespread. In the special, Chappelle voiced support for the Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling, which I'm sure they probably was very mad about, who has been criticized for anti-trans comments. During a monologue, Chappelle also said that gender is a fact and every human being in this room, every human being on Earth, had to pass through the legs of a woman to be on Earth. And that, too, is also a fact. That is a scientific and biological fact. It doesn't matter if you were if you were what they call a test tube baby. Baby's kids rep, uh, reference for those of you out there who don't know, but I have a feeling most of you have already seen that movie. Meaning your mother went to the clinic and got artificial insemination. Boom. There, there you go. Even through surrogacy. Same thing. This is not hatched out of an egg, although some of you out here, I think, were hatched. And I'm not basing it on the way that y'all look, but just some of the way that some of y'all act. But this is ridiculous. At the end of the day, at the core of it all, this is dumb. Like, y'all are trying to cancel this man. And they had the nerve to try to say, oh, we're not trying to cancel Coach Chappelle. Yes, you are. And you're not even doing it originally. You're piggybacking off of something that has been going on for the last two and a half, three months. It's over. It's done with. Move forward. There's so much more going on in this world than what you what your ears assume they heard and what your brain has allegedly processed. That man did not make any bad comments about 
people in that community. If anything, they need to be talking about what happened to his friend Daphne Dorman. If you want to be technical, since y'all want to be, oh, he's talking about trans. He's talking about this. Let's talk about what's going on with what happened with Daphne Dorman. That was a tragic story. All Daphne Dorman, who was a trans woman, a person born as a man living as a woman, went to Dave Chappelle to open up for him. Dave Chappelle said that they bombed and then they came back and they realized how funny Daphne Dorman was. And then people got mad at Dave Chappelle for his sticks and stones piece about the trans community. And Daphne Dorman got online and defended Dave Chappelle. And they said for days they went in on Daphne because they had the nerve to stand up and defend Dave Chappelle. Basically, they were saying Daphne got off cold. And then Daphne went up and, according to Dave Chappelle, leaped off of the building and killed themselves. Now, Dave said that they don't know if the if everything going on with Daphne was the result of what they said, but he's or whatever else Daphne had going on in their life, but they said it didn't help. And for those that didn't know, they said Daphne had a daughter and that Dave Chappelle was creating a trust. And when Daphne's daughter turned 21, they were going to unlock that, give that trust to them. Is anybody in the trans community doing that? Hello? Is this thing on? That's all I'm saying. But they want to get mad about that because they feel that they're not touchable. Like they feel like they're invincible. Like no one can talk about them when it comes to stand up. No one is off limits. Everybody gets talked about. Everybody. And those in the academy, specifically the hall T, y'all are no different. You're not Teflon Don. Let's be clear about that. As long as they're not going over bounds and they're telling you to harm yourselves or go harm yourself or anything like that, it's fair game. First Amendment rights. As a matter of fact, I saw a comment somewhere that said Dave Chappelle has pretty much acted the platinum level of First Amendment rights. Just with this whole situation right here. And that's what they're scared of. That's what they hate. Because they're slipping. And they and it's like the falling and I can't get up. They are. They have fallen. And they can't even attempt to get up. Not even with assistance. So Dave Chappelle keep doing what you're doing. And if he can't. If, he, if, if teenagers can't break him. Or adults can't break them. No one can. It's it. That's it. That is a wrap. Game over. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments.